Hey, Sean Jantz here, and I'm going to do a quick battle plan for Thursday, April 26th, and I'm going to do it on Slash GS, which is the S&P 500 and the other indices that you can find on Nadex. And every single evening, I always start on the four-hour chart, as you can see right there, and that is because... As far as a day trader goes, the four hour chart is the most important chart to understand is what is our bias on this four hour chart? Are we overbought? Are we oversold? Or are we at equilibrium? Okay. And if you get anything, anything away from my training, okay, whether you just come and go, which a lot of people do, they just kind of come and go get what they need and they bounce and it happens, whatever. If you get anything away from me is all the market does is cycle. I just wish you'd understand this. All it does is cycle. It cycles from overbought to oversold, overbought to oversold, equilibrium. It never just continues going in one direction. And your job as a trader is to determine where are we in the cycle. And so here we were, we got really overbought up here. I made some really nice money. As you can see, the sell cycle down. This was actually last week. Made some nice money on that. And I told everybody too, hey, be looking for your sell triggers right around that 2700 and cycle down. That was beautiful, okay? And, and did we ever cycle down, right? It cycled down pretty fast and furious. And now, currently, uh, going into the end of today, and we're already up about five and a half points already, already, uh, we're starting to see that cycle, the four hour candle buy trigger, come back into this market. All it does is cycle, that's all it does. And you've got to decide where are we in the cycle. So you'll notice how we've kind of got a nice little bull pop here. And we're now we're pretty much sitting on this four-hour chart. I would go ahead and consider we're now pretty much sitting here at equilibrium. And that tells us that we have plenty of room to, consent, to continue cycling uh, back up uh, to some nice supply zones. 2660 is a really, really heavy zone to be looking for. And then... Big, big, big target. I don't think we're going to make it there tomorrow, but I've been saying this every week for the last, um, I guess, two months now. 2,700 is a huge, huge, huge magnet on this chart, right? Just look at it. Every time we get below it, we come back. Every time we get above it, we come back. Huge magnet. And so when, it, when or if this chart does really cycle back up, I would anticipate the 2700. I don't foresee us making it there tomorrow. That's a, we would need a pretty large bullish move to make it there. That's another 50 points. It's pretty far. Okay, but just always be, I want, I'm, I'm telling you now so you can be mindful of this, right, for, the, for either Friday or next Monday or Tuesday, right? And then you can see we do have plenty of room to cycle back down to that demand zone, 2600 uh, demand. So we got to be prepared. Uh, for we got tomorrow. We really got to be prepared for coming back up and coming back down We're gonna have structure uh, to the upside and to the downside on our 15-minute chart. So with that said I do actually want to quickly show you the one hour chart cycle because you can see it just a little bit clear You can see the cycle you can see how we had Tuesday pretty large sell-off, right? Uh, and then we caught support right around 2620 to 2615 Okay, retrace and then we bounced off of that demand zone again and that one hour chart really, really cycled back up. So the one hour chart is already starting the process of getting overbought, as you can see. Uh, it definitely has more room to run higher. You, I've already talked to you about the 2660 and then the next zone after that would be the 2680. And then down below, 20 to 15 uh, would be our nice demand zone down below. So make sure that you're always looking at the one hour cycle as well. It'll really help you. Uh, but the four hour chart is the most important. And then always jump uh, to that one hour cycle. Okay. Uh, now what we do, we jump to the 15 day, 15 minute plot chart. What we're doing here is we're just looking for structure. We're looking for the best places to buy, the best places to sell. We're looking for support, resistance, supply, and demand zones. And what I always do is I start exactly where price is. Okay, so we're already up about five points. Uh, we're really seeing that buy trigger come. I start exactly where price is, and then I plan. What am I going to do or not do if this chart starts grinding higher? I gotta have a plan in place for nearly every single scenario. And it's not always a plan like, oh, I'm gonna trade here and trade here. No, no, you also gotta start having plans too where you're gonna stay out and, and you know, uh, you know, find areas on the charts where maybe there's not an edge and pinpoint those. 
And then I start planning what am I going to do or not do if this chart starts running lower. I gotta have a plan in place for that as well. So the first thing let's talk about if we continue grinding higher, and hopefully you watched um, Tuesday night's trade plan. I showed you this Fibonacci retracement, and that Fibonacci retracement, the 61.8, uh, puts us uh, pretty much exactly on that 26.60. So you can see this right there. So we're almost getting super, super close to the 61.8 retracement. I would imagine that these bowls would probably get that finished overnight or first thing in the morning. Okay, and for me, I'm definitely not against looking uh, for sell triggers around that plus 0 0.5, 61.8, 26.60. You can see demand, demand, and then breakout. So that's what I'm kind of looking for in the 15-minute charts. I'm looking for those inflection points that I can use uh, for targets and or resistance. Now, we do know that that four-hour chart, let's go ahead and get rid of this for now, okay? We do know the four hour chart has plenty of room to continue granting higher. So we gotta be mindful of that as well. So I'm not saying that I'm gonna likely do this. I'm just trying to teach you of what also can happen here. Uh, you can also use 2660 as a possible breakout, okay? So let's say the 60 doesn't hold as resistance, price gets up above it, starts holding higher lows, and then you can, can if you want to, okay, you can continue grinding this chart higher up in a Monday POC, Tuesday POC, plus one deviation. So get up above. Here's your entry on an at-the-money binary or at-the-money spread or a traditional future. And then you would use Monday, Tuesday, plus one as your take profits. And if we definitely get up into this zone, I definitely like that zone as possible resistance. You got two, 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 two POCs plus one. One hour chart's gonna be really overbought up here, so I like that as possible resistance. And then you got the 2700, but as you can see, it is a long ways. I don't think we'll make it there. I mean, we would need some really, really bullish, um, really bullish fundamental news, which is possible. We're in the full swing of earnings, so it's completely possible. I'm just trying to also, um, so basically for me, because I'll, I'll go ahead and prepare you for this as well. Let's say I sell here, continues grinding higher, I lose the trade. I'm not going to fight it. I'm not. If we start busting up above plus one, I'm not going to fight it. I'll say screw it and regroup and come back in Thursday night. More than likely looking for sell triggers Thursday night. So now let's talk about if we go lower. You'll notice how we got set right here in the value area low. So one of the things, one of the good things about having this value area box is um, on Wednesday, most of the volume was inside of this box. What does that tell us? That tells us that this, this little move right here, there's no value rate box, right? So what that tells us is that move right there is very thin. There's not a lot of volume there. So what that means is if this chart starts selling down below, uh, there's not going to be much volume to stop it to coming back uh, to this value area low and or negative five Thursday POC. So you can use that to your advantage, okay? There's not a lot of volume here, so it can get through it and it's very thin. And so what I'm gonna be looking for, obviously the lower we go, I wanna be looking for buy triggers. But it is, it is gonna get a little tricky, and this is why. Uh, obviously value area high can hold as support. You have seen that uh, in the course. And then, right in the middle of value area, we have Thursday, negative and a half, and Wednesday, POC. Now, why would that not be one of the best places to buy? The problem is because it's right in the middle of value. There's really no, like, to the tick demand. And so it's just kind of a, I'm not saying it can't hold. Definitely not saying that. What I'm saying is it's just not the best zone. I get it. Thursday, Wednesday, negative and a half. But when you really zoom out and look at the context of this chart, there's, it's really not the best demand zone. We have a little bit of demand there, maybe right there, but it's not the best. And honestly, the best demand zone is value rate low, negative one. You can see the demand, 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 breakout demand. So that's the best one. 
I just don't know if we'll, that is quite a ways away and we would need a pretty deep sell off to make it there. So my point to you is the lower we go, really, really, really use your indicators to help you determine to find that trifecta buy trigger. Either on a, I would be looking on a 30 minute chart tomorrow for your buy triggers. It's either gonna be here, here, or obviously there, right? And so I get it, I'm not trying to be vague. It's not every night where you get kind of, you know, this and then this and then this. It's not every night that happens. You can see, like on Wednesday's trading, it was clear as freaking day where to buy. And then now coming into this morning, coming into Thursday morning, it's not as clear. And so you kind of really use your indicators, but you have three zones of possible targets and support. Value rate high, and then the POC cluster, negative and a half, and then value rate low, negative one. So it's use your indicators to help you. And if you want to, you can wait to enter on one minute candle, higher lows. And then if you're gonna enter value rate high or negative and a half, Either one of those two, make sure to make it quick. In and out, get in and get, get out quick. I'm just going to show you around these other charts here. We'll just look at some of the structure. The context is fairly similar to ES, so you can look at the four hour and the one hour cycle. Um, but you can see that buy trigger came in really, really strong. We're already up over a half a percent, and um, the futures market has only been open for 40 minutes and we're already up half a percent. So that buy trigger came in really strong. We're actually already sitting at the plus 0 0.5, 6,600. And we bounced off of it already about eight points. And so this is not a bad zone of resistance if it wants to kind of come down and retrace. And then of course this chart has plenty of room to continue grinding up to that plus one. So for me, you know, making, making it way up to that plus 0 0.5 right now, really makes the trade plan like that's not what definitely not what I wanted to happen and so it makes the trade plan a little tougher and so if you want to I'd rather wait to see if we can't make it to that plus one and that's where I want to be look at that I'd love to be looking for my sell triggers off of that plus one okay and then as as, as we start going lower uh, it's almost the exact same thing as ES uh, you got value rate low negative and a half right in the middle of value and then you got VA low, negative one. So it's gonna get a little awkward the lower we go. And so that's why it's important to use your indicators, use that trifecta. And honestly, you can even kind of go to NQ, no, no plots, right? And just look purely, right? And so if, you, if, this, if I were to buy this chart, I'd wanna be looking for that 30 minute candle buy trigger somewhere around the 80 to 60. And so 80 to 60 puts me down here, right? So uh, you can also use your indicators to help you. And then obviously these, is, these are guides as well, but it does kind of suck that these are all separated like that. That kind of sucks. And so I'm putting question marks down here. Use your indicators if you're gonna look for pullback by triggers, okay? Uh, RTY, good thing about RTY, Here's the, here, actually, here's the great thing about RTY, is that the boxes, the zones actually are lining up a little bit better. So if we go higher, it's the same thing. You got plus 0.5, Tuesday POC is resistance, and then you got plus one, okay? What I really wanna show you is if we go lower, because this is some great opportunity here. There's gonna be a really good opportunity for a possible 80% roll to the downside. You got a fantastic, fantastic target right here, negative and a half and value rate low. So this is how you play this. But you first gotta wait for this, okay? You gotta, gotta, gotta wait for these bears to bust through set first. They gotta get through set first and then start holding lower highs. There's your entry on an at the money spread or an at the money binary. And then you run that chart lower and you got all of that profit potential waiting for you. The only thing that you gotta be mindful of is a quite a bit of demand on that 1550. So be mindful of that. Use 1550 as your first TP, final take profit right there. I'm not against looking for buy triggers off of this zone right there. And then the second zone would be 40 to 38 right there, okay? So the second zone is right there for possible buy triggers. So this is honestly one of my favorite charts if I had to pick. Okay, and always, 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 every, every single morning or every single hour, pick the chart that has the best edge at that specific time. Don't be trading, trying to trade them all at the same time. Pick the chart that has the best edge. So comment if you have any questions and make sure you're recording everything you're doing 
and take pictures of all of your trades as well and uh, post them in the in the group and in the chat room so that you can get feedback from me and from others.